difference between procurement and purchasing is that purchasing is the function, but procurement is the process, which means in the end, yes, we want to buy something or we want to hire a company to do something for us. But in order for that to happen, there is a process in between that we need to do. And this process is what we call procurement. And in this video, I'm going to be walking you through this process. So let's start. The first thing I would do is to make project packages. What are the packages that we need to procure in our project? And we can have a list like this of all the packages in the projects. As you can see, wooden doors, joinery, painting, countertops, steel doors, and so on. Aluminium, metal, stone cladding, full ceiling. So a list of all the packages that we have in our projects that requires procurement. Then after that, after we know the packages, we need to start preparing something that is called RFP. The RFP stands for Request for Proposal. And the Request for Proposal actually consists of a set of documents. And these documents, as we can see here, we have the drawings, specifications, BOQ, responsibility matrix, and also for any package, we need the budget of the package and the program of work or the duration of work. Because in order to finalize the package or close it, we need these things. So for the drawings, of course, we need the drawings that represents or shows, for example, the steel doors or the aluminum wall or whatever whatever drawings available we need these drawings and we need the specifications as well and i prefer always to send as a part of your rfp the boq why because when you send a boq the people will try to quote as per your boq of course if there is something missing they will try to add it but in the end the offers that you will receive will be on the same boq they will be very much similar to each other so that you can compare them easily i am talking about the comparison and all which we will see in a moment but the BOQ is an important part of the RFP and also the responsibility matrix because the subcontractor that you are going to hire to do a package or something, he needs to understand what exactly is his scope. So apart from his main scope, which for example, in the case of aluminium and metal, his main scope is aluminium and metal. But for example, what about the storage area? What about the electricity required for the work? What about the material shifting? What about the scaffoldings? So he needs to know what are the things that you are going to provide to him and what are the things that he is going to provide himself so that he can account for that in his pricing. After that, before you float the RFP, of course, you need also the budget because the budget of any package, this budget will tell you when you are commercially evaluating what is the range or what is the budget that you have to close this package on or below. So also the program of work, because when you close or when you are about to sign a contract, you need to put a duration in this contract or a timing to finish the works. And also the subcontractor who is quoting for you from day zero, he needs to understand what is the duration that you are giving him to finish the work. Because if the duration is very less or if the duration is less than normal, I believe this will increase his price. And he needs to know from the beginning that what is the duration that you are proposing for him in order for him to quote properly and he will commit for the duration that you need. So we need these things here, drawings, specs, BOQ, responsibility matrix. We need also the budget and we need the program. Then after that, we will go to floating the inquiries so that now you have an RFP. You have all these documents for each package, as we can see on the screen. So you will go now and you will float the packages. But before that, there is one thing that here, this column, if you see required on required on means what? When do we need this subcontractor to be at site? Because actually some of these things are long lead packages or long lead items. So you need to know also in addition to the duration, you need to know when this package is required, because as you can see here, we have so many packages. So which package are we going to start with? Actually, the packages that you will start with are the packages that are either long lead package requires long time to arrive or something that is required immediately or required at the beginning of the project. So you will identify these packages and you will give the priority of procurement to these packages first, the things that are required immediately or as soon as possible, and also the long lead packages. So the column required on here will give us this information. After that, we will go to inquiries. So we will be floating the RFPs or the RFQs, RFPs request for proposal, RFQ request for quotation, which is the same thing, or simply you can say inquiry. It is the same thing. So you will float the inquiries. And as you can see here, package wise, we need to know how many inquiries did we send? How many subcontractors we invited to code for us for this particular package? So you can have a sheet or a log like this and package wise, you need to 
state the number of inquiries that you have sent. So for example, here I am assuming I'm going to be sending 10 inquiries for each package. By the way, this sheet here is a, is a finalized project. It's a closed project. But in your case, you will be updating here like if you just sent the inquiries just now, you will put here the number of inquiries and all this will be blank because you didn't like go to the next step yet. So just for this column, we will put 10. So we floated 10 inquiries and let's assume that after we send the 10 emails or we invited 10 subcontractors to code, three of them regretted. They said, sorry, we cannot code for your project at the moment because we are fully occupied with other projects. So that means that you have a regret column here and three out of 10 has regretted. So that means that we will be receiving seven quotations. Of course, you will not receive the seven quotations at the same moment. So maybe you will receive one quotation tomorrow, another quotation day after tomorrow. Then after that, by one day, maybe two other quotations will come and so on. So this is a follow up sheet. That's why you need to be updating here all the time. So for example, if we received so far two quotations, we'll write here instead of seven, we'll write two. If we receive two more, then the next day we will put four here. So this column will tell you about how many offers or quotations have you received so far. So if you receive more than three quotations, you can start your evaluation. And by evaluation here, we have two things. We have technical evaluation and we have commercial evaluation as well. And actually for the technical evaluation, I'll start with that first, because we need to look at the, is the subcontractor complying to our specifications or not? Is he covering the full scope of work that we need from him or not? And are there any exclusions that are supposed to be part of the scope or not? So we will be looking at these things and we can do something that is called compliance statement, that these are the project specifications and these specifications are, let's say 20 points. So we need to get from the contractor a compliance statement, how he is complying with each of these points in the specification. So once the evaluation or the technical evaluation is done, we can put a tick here. That means that the evaluation is done. So here in column O, this evaluated, if it is evaluated, then we will put a tick. If it is still under evaluation, then we can just write here ongoing so that when I open the log next time, I will see what are the status of each of these packages, what was floated, what is not floated, how many quotations received in each package, then how many quotations evaluated also, or did we do the technical evaluation or not yet. So after we do the technical evaluation, we will go to the commercial evaluation now. And actually the commercial evaluation will have three steps. The first step is to prepare a commercial comparison and I leave a link in the description below for a video that I did that shows you how to make this commercial comparison, how to make a comparison sheet. So we will do that. We will compare the subcontractors. Now, after the technical evaluation, we are assuming that all these people are complying to the scope of work and their price is inclusive of everything that we need for this particular package. So based on that, we will start making our comparison sheet. Then after we make the comparison sheet, we will know who is the lowest, who is the second lowest, who is the third lowest and so on. And we can move to the next step, which is negotiation. So we will be starting to invite the first lowest or for example, let's say the first lowest and second and third will invite three of them for commercial negotiation. So we will be just like talking on the price and the terms of payment and trying to conclude and select one of them. So once the negotiation is done, we will just go for the approval. Now, after you do the negotiation, you will ask them to send you their revised proposals. So once you receive the revised proposals, you will go and update the comparison sheet again. And with that new or revised comparison sheet, you will just send it to the management for approval because of course, it, there will be on the comparison sheet prepared by, checked by, approved by, and so on, because you have to get some approvals in order to be able to make a contract. And this will be an internal process in your company or something. So you have to see how they are doing it in your company. Anyway, you have to get the approval of someone who is responsible on the comparison and the selection, because now as per this, we will be selecting one subcontractor to award the work to. After this, here in the nomination column, we can put the name of the subcontractor that we have selected to do this package. So here, for example, you see I am having amazing build, critical logic, seven stars, Delta X, magnificent engineers, 
whatever the company name that you have selected based on the price and the technical evaluation this company name you will put here and also you will put the price that you have closed of course before you go to the closing or the approval of the comparison you have to make sure that the lowest is meeting your budget that we have specified here in column H or not you should be making a saving from the budget or at least you should meet the budget you cannot exceed the budget if you will exceed the budget then you will need to have some extra approvals or something like that but the usual case is that your price should not exceed the budget so we will put the price here of the selected subcontractor and this price should be less than the budget for sure and after the price we will go to drafting the LOI there is something called the letter of intent because so far what we have done, we have nominated the subcontractor and we agreed the price and everything, but we don't know if the project consultant is going to accept this subcontractor as a subcontractor for this package or no. So in order to make that happen, first thing we issue something that is called a letter of intent. This letter of intent is a document that you will issue to the subcontractor and let's say the summary of this document is that we are intending to award you this work and give you these works or award them to you at this price and this terms of payment but this is subject to consultant approval. You have to go to the site. Now since you have your LOI in your hand, you go to the site, you submit your pre-qualification documents as a subcontractor to the project consultant and if the project consultant approves you then we will make the contract for you so here if we have drafted the LOI and issued the LOI then we should put ticks in these two columns U and V then after we issue the LOI he will go to the site and he will submit his pre-qualification documents so once the pre-qualification documents are submitted we will wait for the approval once this subcontractor gets the approval we will update our log here and we will put a tick that yes this subcontractor is approved by the consultant and now it is the time to draft an agreement for him an actual agreement or an actual contract so we will go ahead to column x and we will draft the agreement so we will draft the agreement then we will issue the agreement to the subcontractor and get it signed by both parties and that means that your package is closed this agreement that is signed by both parties you will send a copy of it to the site manager or the project manager and another copy to the subcontractor himself and now your rule as a procurement is over there is a subcontractor and there is a project manager and there is a contract they will start administrating the contract what is there in the contract and of course in the contract you should attach everything the BOQ and the offer and the specifications the drawings whatever documents you used or you floated as a part of the RFP all these documents should be there in the contract then the project manager can open the contract and easily find everything there he will understand what exactly is the scope that you as a procurement engineer or a procurement department agreed with the subcontractor and then he will start administering this contract and the subcontractor will start working and submitting his payment and going to all these post contract steps and that's it for this video thank you so much for watching and you are very patient if you like the video don't forget to subscribe to the channel and i'll see you in the next video